Hello and welcome to you. So beautiful to be with each of you. Yes. And so uh, it's, it's been exciting times and we have our next retreat coming up. Uh, I believe next week it's starting uh, July 14th through the 19th. Maybe that's two weeks from now. But anyways, we have a retreat coming up soon. I'm looking forward to seeing many of you in person. And so please come to Kripalu if you can, if you could pull it off last minute. We would love to see you, love to have you. And this is really kind of our, our big retreat of the year. It's a, there'll be plenty of time to meet and meditate and get to know each other and to have questions and to connect and do inquiry. So I do hope you can come. Okay. It's the first announcement. Uh, the second announcement is, of course, we have some new uh, a new community page, the Fully Human, Fully Divine Sangha page. So please be a part of that um, if you haven't already. And please continue to post and share your experience and, and support each other on the Kundalini Facebook page. So we have two Facebook pages. And so I hope you can meet some friends and connect and join some groups uh, on one or the other or both or each or however. So uh, this is a good place for you. Good place to be if you're on this path of awakening. Okay, I think I did my announcements. All right, let's just jump right in to the teaching today. And for many of us, when we're on this path and we have a very dramatic awakening, often I get this question, why me? <laughs> like, why me? Why did this happen to me? Why is it happening to me? And what is this, this thing called kundalini? Like, what is it all about? And so there are very specific reasons why the awakening took place or happened in you, but in a, just a big generic reason, like uh, an overarching reason, I shouldn't say generic, <laughs> the big profound reason is because God chose to wake up in your soul. God chose to wake up in your soul. And, you know, I'm using this language very directly. God chose to wake up in your soul. So most of us on planet Earth, we identify with our human self. We don't identify with our soul. We think of our soul as like the second class citizen or something, maybe a third class or fourth class, something that doesn't even really exist. And we place all of our time, our attention, our energy <laughs> into our humanity and our human mask, our human ego psychology and our personality. And if all of our energy and our attention is focused on this personality self, and then this other thing starts waking up in the background, we're going to say, what the heck? Like, this isn't fair. This isn't right. This should not be. Now, you know, boys and girls, I'm going to start with spirituality 101 here today, which is, this is God's world. And earth is a school. And the invitation, you know, from the, from the, I'd like to say the headmaster, but the invitation from the creator is for us to wake up within this school. And God doesn't have very much interest in supporting our mask. God has great interest in removing the mask and showing you what you truly are. Now, I can tell you this from experience. And if you allow this process to happen and you make it to the other side, when you do make it to the other side, every aspect of your being will be much happier, <laughs> much happier, much more loving and free and spacious and peaceful and compassionate and strong and indestructible. And so the way most of us, we look at this journey is we look at it as a war and we resist against it. And that's really not the way to go. That's, that'll just cause us great suffering. And so if we go back to, well, why is this happening to me? Just the overarching reason, because God chose you. You know, like it, 
it, at the heart of every religion just is this this thought like we are the chosen people you know? and in human terms we think of that in like biological or ancestral lineages but god doesn't think in those terms god sees your soul in the depth of your soul the goodness of your soul the ripeness of your soul and god says i'm choosing to wake up in this one now, if we are deeply identified with an ego, which is out of alignment, let's say greatly out of alignment with the soul, this will seem like a real shock. But if our human self is in alignment, or at least, at least marginally close to being in alignment with the soul, it won't seem like a shock at all. It'll be like, oh yeah, of course, of course. And this is where you get people who's, who will say, I've always wanted this. Now, for me personally, ever since I was a kid, my humanity and my soul both wanted to wake up to God. Now, of course, my humanity wanted to be comfortable and safe and, you know, have a nice girlfriend and a nice skateboard or whatever it was, you know, when I was a kid. <laughs> but uh, my humanity, there wasn't a big schism. There wasn't a big... Uh, division between my humanity and my divinity. So when Kundalini happened to me, it was a shock physically. But I was able to help the body get into alignment, to fall into a state of surrender with the Kundalini. And even that was still hard. But despite it being hard, I said, I'm choosing this. But if our humanity says, I'm not choosing this. I don't like this. This is unfair. I'm uncomfortable. To the degree that we argue with it, with the kundalini, to the degree that we argue with our true nature, is to the same type of degree that we are going to suffer psychologically. So let me just, just, uh, just share a little bit more about the why. So again, the overarching is because God chose you, because your soul was ripe, your soul was ready, even if your humanity isn't. And let's be clear here. No one's humanity is ready for this awakening. Like even the people I meet who live in ashrams and doing all the yoga and the yoga science and this and that, and they say they want it, their humanity still isn't fully ready. Because our humanity will resist. I just mean like purely like the central nervous system. It will resist anything outside of it that is overwhelming. Like I can, I can tell you this and y'all might just laugh at me. Uh, I'm a strong fella. I do jujitsu. I climb mountains. I ride motorcycles, all this kind of stuff. But let me tell you, uh, if you ask me for my blood, I'm going to turn pale and I'm going to start to quiver in, in my inner loins. I'll just be quivering all through the center because I don't want to give up my blood. I don't want that needle. That needle is scary and it's overwhelming to me and I resist it. So this morning I had to go and get some blood work done. And, you know, when I was in there, you know, I was turning pale and my body was shaking. <laughs> and the, the nurse told me, you know, look, look the other way. And she stuck the needle in and there I was like just sweating and, you know, shaking and this and that. And uh, she said, okay, all done. And I was like, all done. Like, did you do all five tests? Is that just one test? You're not going to poke me again. And she's like, you're all done. <laughs> like, You're all done. You're all done. And here my body was greatly resisting, terrified, scared of something, you know, that was coming to support me. It was for something that was coming to support me. I was terrified of it. I was resisting it. And I got out into the parking lot. And I want to tell you this. I cried and I laughed. <laughs> Just how silly, how silly I was. And post-awakening, after we really wake up, we will cry and we'll laugh at how much our body resisted this wonderful experience. 
And so with Kundalini, the Kundalini, it's coiled at the base of our spine. And it's in this, this state, you know, like almost in this, this dormant state where it's not moving, it's not functioning. And, you know, you may not know about your soul, but you may say, Craig, well, what are some other reasons besides God chose it? Well, other reasons are, you know, we might at some point on the path just start doing lots of meditation. Meditation opens us, it relaxes the body. And as the body relaxes, and we let go of that thing within us that wants to control. And I call that the, the super ego or the command center. When we let go of that, that kundalini, which is dormant and coiled at the base of the spine, it realizes, oh, no one's controlling. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to flow. So some of you have come here because you started doing meditation for stress. And then all of a sudden you're having a kundalini awakening. You're like, what is this? Some of you have come here from the world of yoga. Here's a fun one. Some of you have come here because you got super high one night, <laughs> like smoking something, and that relaxed the super ego. And then all of a sudden, this kundalini is like, oh, look, they're not repressing me. I can flow now. Some of you are here because uh, you opened the doors of perception in a powerful way through psychedelics. And, you know, if you go on the internet and you see these, these, uh, this clickbait about, you know, the benefits and, you know, I was cured of my, my depression overnight, you know, through doing ayahuasca, people are like, oh yeah, give me some of that. Let's try that. I'll do, I'll take any magic pill in order to heal this depression. And so we might go, you know, to the jungles of the Amazon and say, okay, I'm going to heal my depression and we come back with kundalini that has been awoke because this powerful substance relaxed the doors of perception it relaxed the controlling one and then this energy just began to flow it began to flow there's many different reasons for for some of us the reason is that we were a great yogi or let's have some fun, or maybe a mediocre yogi <laughs> in a previous incarnation. And, you know, we did all this work. And because we're souls, you know, and our soul is on this trajectory of growth, we have a powerful awakening. Or we do all this spiritual work and we get to some, you know, level of openness. And then when we incarnate into this lifetime, we do three minutes of yoga or meditation, and then all of a sudden this thing wakes up. We might say, wow, that was quick. What is this? This is crazy. This is intense. And we may have forgotten about all the training we did in a previous incarnation. We may have no idea that it's possible to live across multiple incarnations. We may just be a normal, everyday Joe <laughs> and say, why did this happen to me? But the truth is we're not an ordinary, everyday Joe. We are a divine being who's lived countless lifetimes. And we may have done great spiritual practice in previous incarnations. And so when we have an incarnation that's real mediocre in this lifetime, or normal, or you know, mundane, or we're not doing great practice, we, we weren't born in an ashram, and then this energy wakes up, that might shock us and be a bit of a surprise. So here's another fun one. Um, some of us, you know, so, so again, if we just start with the framework, everyone has kundalini coiled at the base of their spine. And that energy is kept down, repressed in our body. And it won't wake up until the force that's repressing it gets out of the way. Now, some of us go through great traumas. And whether it's, you know, the death of a loved one, uh, we get really sick. Uh, maybe somebody preys upon us or abuses us in a certain way. And they, they break down our ability to psychologically resist. And so, so 
like with a lot of people, say you're going through a divorce, you know, we'll use myself as an example. When you're going through a divorce, your psychology will say, keep everything together, keep everything together. We got to keep working. We got to take care of these kids. We got to finish graduate school. We got to do whatever it is that we're doing. That's what the ego is always trying to control. And then your ego one day just gets smacked and hit hard or broken down. And you get this enormous shock where you realize I can't control life. I can't control my mother, father, sister, brother, partner, husband, wife, ex-wife, partner, ex-husband, child. I can't control anything. And the ego just comes to this realization. It kind of, and the realization is normally a violent one. It basically, my life is out of control. And it's always been out of control. In that moment, often the Kundalini begins to flow. This is also why there tends to be, I don't want to say a high number, but there is um, there's a correlation between people who've had psychotic breaks and people who who also have kundalini flowing, <laughs> and so and that can lead to like a high degree of mental illness sometimes in spiritual groups and especially spiritual groups with kundalini. And so, you know, if we took a substance and had it. A psychological break if we had great stress and had a psychological break if we were traumatized and had a psychological break and our super ego is no longer able to keep everything together and repress the kundalini at the same time sometimes in the breaking down of our psychology all of a sudden <laughs> that kundalini starts to flow and that might not be the best time <laughs> for the kundalini to be flowing but here's where we have to go back to the first teaching today to say we have a messy awakening i had a messy awakening but let's say we we had a messy awakening humans often say and that's a mistake or they use words like it's a premature awakening there's no premature awakenings and there are no mistakes because this is God's world and God is in charge. And your soul sat down with God and chose this. Your humanity <laughs> may violently resist it, but your soul chose this and your soul will grow alongside the kundalini will awaken alongside the kundalini. In fact, your soul actually is. The kundalini is your soul and vice versa. Whereas when we're rooted in our human self, we're like, no, this is unfair. I don't like this. This isn't right. But when we're rooted in the soul, there's a thought of, of course, of course, of course. Of course, this is the truth. Of course, this is what I am. I always knew I was greater than just this human body. This little human body that's scared of needles. <laughs> so, okay. This is what I'm going to invite all of us to play with. I'm going to invite you all just to close your eyes. And we'll just begin to breathe. And of course, let's soften throughout the body, just knowing the more we can relax and let go, the more fluidly and easily this kundalini will flow. And so breathing in and breathing out. And I just invite you just to take a moment here and to look, to reflect on the teaching today. And really to look where you're identified in relationship to Kundalini. Are you fully identified with an ego that thinks this is unfair and unjust and that you really want to be an astronaut and why is God, you know, not supporting you in this? Or are you aligned with the soul? Can you see the deep truth that you are a divine being. Can you feel the deep truth? 
at your essence is light, is love, is radiance, is kundalini shakti. And of course, if there are places within you that feel tight and tense, resistant, that this is unfair and this is not right, I invite you to breathe into those places and to see if you can include them in a space of love. You can invite this light of Shakti to flow into them, softening them, welcoming, welcoming them into alignment. And so breathing and feeling throughout the entirety of the body. And you might notice some places that just feel just like an animal that's scared. It doesn't know anything about Kundalini. It doesn't know anything about God like these very primal aspects of our nervous system. I just fight, or run, or resist, and let us breathe love into these areas, letting them know you don't need to be afraid of the light, for you are the light. You don't need to be afraid of this thing called God because you are God. Breathing into them, breathing into the body, the personality mind, the emotional mind, letting you know it's okay to open and trust and try something now. It's okay to open and trust and try a different way than just fighting and resisting. And for many of us who've resisted for a long time, it gets old after a while. It gets old. And so we try something new. We're going to try to open. We're going to try to sit a little bit longer. We'll try some yoga. We'll go on a retreat. We'll spend time in silence. We'll open to this mysterious energy and let it flow. And so I'm going to invite everyone just to, just to feel down into the root chakra, the perineum, the inner thighs, just that whole tender, vulnerable area. And just notice, am I tense? And can I open? Can I breathe? Can I trust? And so taking some deep, full breaths into the root chakra, the perineum, the hips, the sacrum, the inner thighs, the feeling into the lower abdomen, the hara. Can I breathe? Can I soften? Can I open? Can I let go of any unconscious tension? I'm just beginning to notice. There's more space, more energy, fluidity in the root and now in the hara. So let's include the third chakra center. Feeling this energy flowing up the spine from the root to the hara and to the solar plexus. Softening and opening, inviting a flow of energy. Inviting a balance.
Each and every breath. Breathing and feeling and softening. As this energy flows up the spine and inhabits the third chakra center, bringing light and radiance, continuing to open, inviting this energy to flow again from the earth to the root, to the heart, through the solar plexus, into the heart. And just noticing, is my heart open? Is it relaxed? Is it at ease? Am I open in the front? The right side, the left side, behind, above and below. And as we open, this Kundalini shows us who you truly are. It might feel different than your normal human self. Feel expansive or radiant, or loving. So continuing to let this energy flow and flood the chest. Coming up and overwhelming the throat chakra, overwhelming it into openness. <laughs> so you can cooperate by softening and trusting, letting this energy flow up into the throat. Going right through the th throat into the third eye, softening and relaxing. expanding and just noticing this different way of being. You know yourself is this subtle energetic aliveness. You know yourself is vast and expansive peace. You know yourself as silence and radiance instead of thought and emotion. So continuing to open and letting this energy flow, flowing up and out the crown, pouring into heaven, showering down upon the earth. And I invite you in this moment to consciously choose. What do I want to be? Do I want to be that small limited character who's made of thought and emotion? who's always shifting and changing and depending upon how comfortable the body is affected by stress and age and gender and politics and this and that and <laughs> what our parents say, do you want to be that small thing so easily perturbed and offended? Or do you want to be this limitless thing? Just silent, open, vast, and free. Radiating with light. Radiating with light. And if you choose the light, you will find that this light wants to include your humanity. <laughs> it doesn't have to be where the light and the humanity is no good, but we, when you choose the light, you choose love. Love is an inclusive movement. And I invite you to see this kundalini that you are embracing your body, embracing your life, embracing this earth as a school, a school of spirituality. Not a school of getting what you want, but a school of spirituality. And can we choose to attend this school consciously, sharing our heart and our love and our truth with this world? And so breathing, feeling, smiling, opening. And with that, I invite you to gently open your eyes and I welcome you into this space. And so 